Excuse me, sir. Uh, could you spare any change? Uh, miss, uh, do you have any change you could spare? Baby, you know, you see this gentleman over here? He's a friend of mine. If you will go over and talk to him, I'm sure that he'd be willing to let you wipe down some tables, maybe sweep up the floor a little bit, and he'd compensate you, maybe with some cash, or at least with a meal. I didn't ask you all of that. Do you have change or not? Yes, I do, but apparently not for you. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, friends, family, this is a real situation. This occurred in a pizza parlor on my way to work. Now those of you who know me know that my experience is in customer service. And as I told you, I've been a customer service representative for about 36 years, which is a pretty long time. I like to think that I've done Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours as customer service representative. And clearly, that reflects in all of my behaviors and how I manage with people. It's, it's, it's a lifestyle for me. And what I learned to recognize many years ago is to try to identify who my customers are. Now this gentleman clearly wasn't looking for what I had to offer. All I could offer him at that time, I could have offered him cash, I could have offered some change, but I wanted to go above and beyond because I've put 10,000 hours in to customer service. And what I wanted to offer him was benefit of my experience and give him some creative example of how he could change his situation. But clearly, he wasn't a customer for me. Now, the secret to this is, with Toastmasters, one of the things that we do is we learn new words all the time. That's one of the things that we pride ourselves in, in is learning new words. Change is not a categorical word. It's not unambiguous. It is very ambiguous because it depends on our experience and how we bring that in to where we are. He wanted change in the form of money. And most of us think of it, when you say, Do you sp can you spare any change? Most people think you're talking about cash. Well, what about the change in attitude, a change in your approach, which was what I wanted to offer to him. Here is a change in your approach that could bring you change that turns from the the coins into the paper into a business. It's happened. I had a store in downtown Baltimore and I had a young man come to me one day and confess. I'm an addict. I'm homeless. I have nothing. But you have a new business and I see you scrub your own windows. A lady like you shouldn't have to do that. If you would allow me I would love to do those windows for you, just for a few dollars. You tell me how much you want to give me, and I will do that for you. Well, I have to tell you, I had more respect for that homeless addict than I did for this gentleman in his Nikes and his decked out gear looking for a handout. I managed to arrange that this young man come to my store. I had to provide the squeegee in the beginning. <laughs> the bucket, the water, everything, that he come to my store every Monday morning. We made a business deal. I run a business, and if we're going to be business partners, you have to treat me like a business partner. I expect you here 9 o'clock on Monday morning. If you're drugged out on Sunday night, you better make sure somebody gives you the drugs that will wake you up at 9 o'clock on Monday morning. <laughs> I want my windows done every Monday morning, and if you would do that for me, I will compensate you. And we agreed on an amount, which he thought was pretty generous. I, it helped me out a lot because I was a new business. My neighboring businesses saw this occurring, and this gentleman ended up with one business every day during the week. Then he started to expand and ended up with businesses on the other streets. 
he was soon able to rent a room. What I gave him didn't do that for him. His change in attitude did that for him. Perhaps the guy in the pizza store wasn't motivated enough. Hunger motivates. And if people would stop offering short-term fixes for long-term problems and a lack of creativity, perhaps the hunger would begin to motivate more people. My secret is this. We are all customer service representatives, or whether we think of ourselves as that or not. I don't care if you're a doctor, a politician, an engineer, you could be a domestic engineer. You're still a customer service. Any interaction that you have with another person, one is being served and the other is providing service. Doesn't matter what you're doing, any interaction. In a love relationship, one is being served while one is providing service. Everywhere you go, people have human needs and that's what we're, we respond to, that's how we behave based on what our needs are. We have needs for, for love, for security, for creativity. We have a need to learn. We have a need to grow. And we most often will need what makes us feel the most secure, the most creative, the most loved, the most included. And when you're talking with someone, you are either selling them or they're selling you. Now you can either change your attitude about how you think about customer service, or you can continue with an addiction, rather it be an addiction to uh, an abusive spouse, or an addiction to not being able to let go of a job for security. If you can change a little bit your attitude, change the definition, find out what the other ambiguous meanings are, for what's going on in your life. It can make a huge difference. It can go from a borrowed squeegee to a business and a chest like Arnold Schwarzenegger used to have. I saw this develop in that man and I was proud of what he did with it. But you know what? I learned a long time ago. You gotta know who your customers are. So I'm gonna ask each and every one of you, is there some change you could spare? Bella Toastmasters. Okay.